Good morning to Revive City Church. How are we doing today? Everybody had a good weekend so far? It's only going to get better. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord today. Thank you for team for leading us into God's presence. It's easy to speak when we've all recognized that God is in the house. And uh, so I just pray today that this word goes and it finds receptive soil and hearts. I want to welcome all of you uh, online. Would you give it up for our friends online here today? We're glad that you're with us. And we're glad that each one of you are here today. We're in the middle of a series called Encounters. And we're looking at different instances when people encounter the Savior, encounter the Christ. What can you expect? That's the question we're asking every week. And the reality is you can expect the unexpected. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I spoke about the woman caught in adultery, and she got forgiveness. And she got grace, and she got mercy in spite of all the judgment that was in the crowd. Today, we're going to look at Peter trying to walk on the water. And everybody remember that story? The minute he took his eyes off of Jesus, what happened? He sank like a rock. And it's a great reminder that when we're in the middle of a storm, what can you expect? And I'll tell you what you can expect. You can expect the God of peace to show up and show off and do something great on your behalf. You can expect that. When you're facing something impossible, you can expect the God who makes all things possible to show up and show off and to help you through whatever it is that you are experiencing. And here's the reality. It only takes a touch from God. You know, in this passage, when Peter was sinking, he just put his hand out there, and God put his, and the minute the two locked, everything changed. You understand that? And then it says that he went on to another village, and the people brought all the sick people to him, and everybody who touched him was healed and restored and revived and renewed and delivered. So what can you expect? Man, you can expect when you're facing the impossible that God is going to make a way. God is going to see you through whatever it is you are going through. Let's read the story. It's in Matthew chapter 14. Jesus has just fed 5,000 people with a sack lunch. Woo! Mercy. <laughs> he must be the Messiah. What do you think? That's what these signs and wonders are for. It's to validate his message that he is the bread of life. He is the great I am. So here's what it says. It says that immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. I want to say this. God is always calling us to the other side. He's calling us to the other side of faith. He's calling us to the other side of hope. He's calling us to the other side of presence and power and peace and to walk and work through whatever it is we are facing and follow him with all of our hearts. And it says, and while he dismissed the crowd, and after he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. I think that's so telling. The God-man needed and practiced a very powerful connection with the Father. No wonder he could walk on water. No wonder he could put his hand out and do the impossible and save people and deliver people and help people like no one else of his day could. It says when he went up into the mountain to pray, it says that when evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. So he's looking down. I'm telling you, he's got his eye on you today. He sees the boat that you're in. He sees the wind. He sees the waves. He see, and I'm telling you, he is moved by that. And the Word of God says he's at the right hand of the Father making intercession on your behalf today to ensure that you're going to get through it. It says during the fourth watch of the night. Guess what time that is? 3 a.m. I want you to know our Savior does not sleep or slumber. That His eye is always on you. Always on you. Always talking to the Father. It says, during the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. Do, 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 do. I mean, that's exactly what the disciples felt. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. They said, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. And I love this, but immediately, Jesus doesn't wait. Immediately, Jesus said to them, take courage. It is I. He literally says the, the name that God used of himself in the Old Testament, I am. He's saying God is in the house. Anywhere he shows up, I am, you are. I am, you can. I am, you will. You will get through, so take courage. And then Peter, I like to say Peter the goober, 
I love Peter, don't you? Always got his foot in his mouth, always blabbing. First one to deny the Lord, first one in the water. First one to say, come on, God, let's do it. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. I bet Peter thought he was a big dog then. What do you think? He's walking on the water. Hey, guys, look at me. Ho, ho. Don't you wish you could do what I'm doing? Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, came toward Jesus. But then he saw the wind, and he was afraid, and he began to sink, and he cried out, Lord, save me. You see what happened when he took his eyes off of God? But he made a great confession. God, save me. God, I need some help here. And again, immediately, I love that. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. And he said, you have little faith. He said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Even the wind and the waves obey him, friends. Even the wind and the waves, whatever it is you're being rocked by, obey the Lord God Almighty. Then those in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are are the son of God. Have you ever said that? It's a game changer. It's an absolute game changer when you finally understand Jesus is the Messiah. And he can do anything. He can deliver you through anything. He can see you through anything. It was a beautiful summer day. And this young mother set her playpen up right beside the pool, and the phone rang, and she ran in to answer the phone. She was only there for a moment. My little baby tugged on the wall of the pen, and the hinge holder gave way. It didn't have to. God could have stopped it, but it didn't, and the wall came down. And the baby crawled out and fell into the pool, and heaven was silent. And when the mom returned, she saw that horrible sight of her dear baby at the bottom of the pool, lifeless. Therein began a season of unspeakable pain, unspeakable shame, unspeakable discouragement. Anybody besides me know what any of that feels like? Unbelievable difficulty, in part maybe because of what I did or what I didn't do, or what I should have done. Every birthday, every holiday, every day reminded her of the unfathomable pain. I want to say today, friends, that is life. Anybody know disappointment? Anybody know discouragement? Any, anybody know here today the impossible? I'm talking about storms that we all face. How about when you lose your job and they say, you're no longer needed? Ever happened? How about when you do something you wish you hadn't have done and it costs dearly, not just you, but everybody around you? How about when you can't quit doing that stupid behavior that you know is leading nowhere, but you just keep repeating it? How about when you go to the doctor and they say, it is not good news. I remember when they told my wife, you have cancer. And 13 months later, she's gone. She's good. She's okay. God saw us through the storm. But friends, storms are a reality of life. What do you need at a time like that? You ready? You need a touch. You need a touch of hope. You need a touch of help. You need a touch of presence. You need a touch of prayer. You need all the things that Jesus can offer. And that he gave Peter when Peter found himself absolutely overwhelmed in life. You know, I stopped and think about what Peter must have felt like when he got in those wind and waves. And, and, and he starts sinking. And what do you think he's thinking? Why in the world did I step out of the boat? <laughs> What, why, why have I done this? Anybody ever said that? What, what am I doing here, God? Come on. The waves are crashing. The wind is howling. I believe we need to confess. You are the Christ. You're the only one that can get me through. I believe we need to lock in on the one whose eyes are locked in on you. 
and not waver one way or the other. I mean, this is a great story, isn't it? You know why they're here? To teach us. To let you learn life lessons. And one of the first lessons that we learn from this story is that storms happen in life. And everybody said... Jesus said it this way in the Upper Room Discord, John 16, 33. He said, these things I'm speaking to you so that in me you're going to have peace. And then he said this, I promise in the world you're going to have tribulation. Testings of all kinds. But then he said this, but you be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. And I can make the impossible possible and I can make the undoable doable. But friends, don't kid yourself. Storms happen in life, in the journey that we are, you cannot escape from them, but you can get through them. If you'll make the right responses and choose the right focus. I, send, I contend today that trials, tribulations, testings, they're no respecter of persons. No respecter. This is not our home, friends. It's a broken, busted, fallen world. And God is currently redeeming it all and reclaiming it through the rule and reign of Jesus. And that's why you need to lock hands with him. Because he can take you where no one else can take you and get you through what no one else can get you through, friends. Storms happen. You know what James says about storms? He says, count it all joy when you endure endure various trials, tribulations, and testings. Count it all joy when the bottom falls out. Why? Because God's at work. You guys know you grow best in the valley, not on the mountain, right? No pain, what? No gain. And we need to remember that here today, friends. Jesus himself was a suffering servant, well acquainted with grief. That's why you can go to him in confidence and realize he's been there and he's done that. And he did it gloriously and he did it victoriously. And it's the only way you're going to get through it. How many of you remember the Apostle Paul? Three times he said, Lord, please take what? Excuse me, this freaking thorn in my flesh. And what was it? I think it was his wife. No, just kidding. <laughs> that was a joke. That was an absolute joke, Okay. Just want to make sure you're listening. It doesn't tell us what it was. But three times God said what? No can do. Not going to do it. Because my grace is sufficient for you. And I want you to learn to lean into me. I want you to let me have my way in your life. And God doesn't frequently get his way until we can do nothing but look up. Amen? And that's exactly what God was telling Paul. When I'm weak. Or when you're weak, I'm strong. When you can't, I can. When you're not, I will, I am. You know, I think of Joseph in the Old Testament, book of Genesis. Brothers threw him in a pit, left him for dead. How's that? Talk about a storm. He ends up rising in the in the in the in the land of the of the unbelievers into a high office and then The king's wife makes a pass at him. He ends up spending 13 years in jail for doing nothing. Help me. Is that a storm? And you know, he's the one who said in Genesis 50 verse 20, even what the enemy intends for harm, God is going to do and God is going to bring good through it. Amen, church? And we need to have the right attitude when we're going through these difficulties. You know, sometimes we have storms because we're out of the will of God. Sometimes that's the case. Jonah ended up in the belly of a whale because he was running from the call of God. In 1 Corinthians, Paul says to the church there that's coming to the Lord's table in an unworthy manner, and they're not examining their hearts, and they're not coming with gratitude, and they're not walking in the grace and forgiveness of the Lord. He says, listen, that's why some of you are sick, and that's why some of you have died. Sometimes we experience a storm because we've been disobedient and rebellious to God. But follow me. Please follow me. Sometimes you get a storm because you're in the will of God. How many know Jesus was in the will of God when they took him to the cross? 
How many of you know Paul was in the will of God when he said, I, I got three thorns I'd love to get out of me. Please take them away, God. Sometimes you do the right thing, and guess what? Life gives you the wrong side back. It's not our home, friends. It's not our final dwelling, friends. But here's the truth. You learn the most through difficulty. Amen? Not when we get what we want, but when God gets what he wants. His way in your life. And you allow him to mold you, and you allow him to make you, and you allow him to draw you to himself because God wants us to trust and obey because there's no other way so storms happen we in agreement here's the powerful part of this story too God is with us in the storms everybody said using it to develop us not destroy us using it to lift us up not take us down I said it earlier no pain what you know, there's some things that cannot happen except through the refiner's fire. Through testings and trial. That's why James said, count it joy. God is at work if you'll surrender. I remember hearing about a little boy walking up on a cocoon that was wiggling and writhing and inside was a moth. And he saw this little bitty pinhole where the moth was trying to get through and wrestling and struggling. And he thought, well, I'm going to do them off a favor. He got a pair of scissors, and he snipped the end of the cocoon and out rolled this big old ugly, monstrous-looking, swollen-bodied, shriveled wing creature that never developed the wingspan it was intended to, that never became the beautiful butterfly. Here's the reason why. Because the struggle, the struggle through the small opening was what God would use to force the body fluids into the wingspan and into the being of becoming an absolute gorgeous, beautiful butterfly, but the young man cut it short. You grow the most under pressure. God does his best work when you hurt the most. I love this. Hebrews says, Jesus himself learned obedience and was perfected through his sufferings. Don't tell me you're better than him. It's not going to happen. How does a diamond get created? Pressure, 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 pressure. And it's a thing of beauty in the end. How does a pearl form? Irritation, 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 irritation. And then you get this thing of beauty in the end. See, friends, storms are God's refiner's fire. It is one of the best ways that he develops you. At a season in my life, in my early 20s, I lost everything, and I mean everything. And I can look back today and say that was one of the greatest seasons I ever had in my whole life as a young man. He taught me what counts. It taught me what needed to go. It taught me where I needed to go. You guys with me today? Somebody happened upon a silversmith who was heating the molten and scraping off the dross and heating the molten and scraping off the dross because that's the way you purify silver. And they looked at him and they said, well, how do you know when the silver's ready? Listen to what he said. He said, when I can see my reflection in the dross. God looks at you and says, I'll know when you're ready when I can see my reflection in your life. <laughs> Amen. And until then... You're going to continue to go through trials and testings and tribulations. And God is going to see you through every single one of them. Amen, church? And here's what we know. God is with us in the storm. And there's a few ways that this passage teaches us. One is that he's with us in prayer through the storm. You know, when he put the disciples out to sea, they're three miles out. Where's Jesus at that time? You remember? He's up on the mountainside praying to God. 2,000 years ago, God sent Jesus to tell us about God. Today, where's Jesus? You ready? He's at the right hand of the Father telling God about us. Hebrews says he lives today to make intercession for you and for me. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. God will see you through the storm in prayer. As you posture with God in humility, as you cry out to the Father, and you know that Jesus himself is doing that on your behalf. I read about a doctor who was part of Overseas Missionary Fellowship in Africa. And he was a doctor in the bush, and so every two weeks he had to go to the city and ride his bike. And he'd ride halfway, camp out, and then ride the rest, get the medicine, come back. On his way one time, he, he found two men fighting. One of them almost died, and he healed him. He doctored him. He took care of him. A little bit later, the guy came back to thank the doctor. And he said, Doctor, we knew that when you left that city with the medicine and when you were on your way to get the medicine, you had a lot of money. We knew you were going to camp out, and we went to that camp out in order to steal and rob from you. But when we got there, he said, you were surrounded by armed guards, 26 of them. The doctor laughed. He says, no, I was by myself. True story. I was by myself. A little bit later, the doctor's on furlough. He's talking to his home church that had sent him out. He tells them that story. In the middle of it, one of the men says, wait a minute, doc. Tell us, what day was it when you were camping out? Because when it's night there, it's day in the United States of America. And the doctor told him, he said, well, guess what? On that day, God pricked my heart. And he told me you were in trouble. And he told me to pray that you'd be protected. And not only did I pray, I sent a message through the church. He looked at him, he said, now if you were here and you heard and you, st- and you prayed for the doctor on that day, please stand up. Guess how many people stood up? 26 people stood up, friends. 26. You get through the storm by partnering with God in prayer. You know another thing this story teaches? You get through the storm by being in his presence. Who walked out on the water in the middle of the night? Jesus did. Because he knows what you're going through, I promise. He's omnipresent. You understand that? That's a fancy theological word for saying you cannot escape his presence. Isn't that awesome? If you rise with the sun, he's there. When you go to bed at night, he's there. And he's there all in between. He never leaves your presence. What did he say when he left the disciples? Lo, I am with you always. Always means what? Always. It's a Greek word, right, Pastor? (laughs) I love it. Jesus walks and meets them at the biggest need of their life. And I think there's another truth here that is really, really important. And that is, the greatest storm of your life is under the feet of Jesus. Clap, you should. Whatever your storm is, I promise you, he's on top of it. He's not under it. You might feel like you're under it, but he's going to bring you out of it. You got sickness? That's under the feet of our Savior. He's Jehovah Rophe, the God who heals. I speak as one who lost his wife to cancer. She's doing awesome today. God was with us every step of the way. He healed her powerfully, gloriously, victoriously. Your job loss, it's under the feet of Jesus. Your addiction that you just can't seem to stop, it's under the feet of Jesus. Amen? Whatever storm you're going through, whatever difficulty, here's what I say. God is large and he is in charge. So hold fast, as Casting Crown says, helps on the way. His presence is what, you know, yesterday I had the most powerful, 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 three times for emphasis, lunch with a group of believing men that I think I've had in years We all had a dear friend die after three years of battling with cancer. And when this friend was dying, he said, here's what I want for a funeral. I want 15 of my best friends to come together. I want my two sons, my young adult sons to come 
and I want you to tell Mike stories, and I want you to build them up. I'm, I'm getting chills right now. You, you talk about being sobered and remembering what's important and what's not, what counts and what doesn't. And we all told Mike stories. It was, it was awesome. And in the middle of every single story, you know what we realize? The Lord God Almighty never leaves and never forsakes his own. Ever. Ever. Unbelievable, powerful experience. And the whole message of that afternoon is the whole message of this text today. All is good because God is good. Amen? And he is in control. He is large and in charge. And the storm is under his feet if you will only go to him. And I love it. When the disciples saw him, they screamed out, it's a ghost. They panic. And he says what? Don't be afraid. And then he uses the formal name of God from the Old Testament. I am here. I am Jehovah Shalom, the God of all peace. I am Jehovah Rophe, the God who heals. I am Jehovah Jireh, the God who restores and meets every single need. I am Jehovah Sitkanu, your righteousness. I am, and because I am, you ready? You are. Because I am, you can. Because I am, you will. That is what Jesus is saying in that moment, and that is what he is saying. You and God are always a majority, church. Always. Not sometimes, not a few times. And as long as Peter stayed focused and faithful, he overcame. And the moment he began to sink, what happened? Just let me put my hand into the hand of the one who steals the water, and we're going to be fine. Can you hear God say, I am today? I'm able, I'm capable, I'm here. I'm in love with you. Remember hearing about a guy who was in the hospital and he's facing this unbelievable major surgery and he is scared to death. A gentleman walks in in a long white coat and a black bag and he says, man, you look scared. He says, I'm scared, I'm scared. The gentleman says, well, you don't need to be scared. It's all going to be okay. Whew. This hospital has done that case thousands of times. I, I, know, it's, I, know, I know what's going to happen. You are going to be fine. Whew. The guy then t- picks up his black bag, walks over to the TV set, pulls out his tools, and starts repairing the TV. And all of a sudden, the guy in the bed goes, that guy is a TV repairman. He's not my doctor. (laughs) Right message, wrong person. Listen to me, church. Right message, I am with you. We're going to get through this. Right person, the Lord God Almighty himself, who never leaves, who never forsakes, who is always there, always cares. Amen, church? You get through whatever difficulty, whatever storm you're in by counting on the prayers of God, by counting on the presence of God. And another way you get through it is in power. You know, the Word of God says that on Pentecost, when the Spirit of God was poured out, the word that was used is dunamis, power, power. The power that raised Jesus from the dead fell upon God's people. And you think he can't see you through what you're going through? This passage says the minute they all got back into the boat, then what? Whew! Where's the storm? What storm? That's all it took. Even the wind and the waves obey him, church. Amen? He can do anything. Thing. He is large and he is in charge. You know, I thought about this story in 2 Kings chapter 6 of King Aram when he sent men to Dothan to surround Elijah, the man of God, and take him out. And Elijah sent his servant out and he looked and he saw that the city was surrounded by the enemy. And he was scared to death. And then, and then Elijah prayed a prayer. This is so powerful. He said, God, open his eyes so he can truly see what's going on here. 
and he sent him back out there. And when the servant went back out this time, it says that the hills were full of horses and chariots surrounding Elisha. And so when he came back, Elisha was able to say, those with us are greater than those against us. And everybody said, amen. You and God are always a majority, church. Always. And Paul prays in Ephesians 1, Lord, let us understand and know and walk in the power that raised Jesus from the dead. That's not just some great historical story. That's a reality for the life of the believer. That's what it is. He's with us in prayer. He's with us in presence. He's with us in power. It's a great story, isn't it? So let's make some application. I got, I got four things I want to send you away with today. And the first one is this. Be willing to get out of the boat and go to Jesus. Be willing to get out of your boat and go to Jesus. Your boat of fear. Your boat of doubt. Your boat of unbelief. Your boat of despair. Your boat of addiction. Your boat of despair. Your boat of prayerlessness. And hold fast. Because help is on the way. What boat do you need to get out of? And start walking in faith toward Jesus. Second thing is when you do start walking, stay focused and stay faithful. <laughs> Choose who you're going to listen to. I'm not listening to the lies of the enemy one more day. Anybody want to join me? I'm not going to look at the circumstances that want to try and say life's not good. One more day, I'm going to look at the God who controls the circumstance. I'm going to listen to his promises that say, I'm with you. As Max Licato says, whatever you're going through, you are going to get through it. And he, and he puts a little condition on it. He says, it might not be fast and it might not be easy, but by golly, you are going to get through it. So stay focused Stay faithful. Stop looking at the wind. Stop looking at the waves. And realize what Paul said in Romans 8. Nothing, nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not life, not death, not principalities, not nothing. The third thing I want to encourage you today is make the right confession. You guys remember what they said? Two things. First, they said, Lord, save me. Peter said, Lord, save me. Have you done that? You had a time in your life when you realized, I'm sinking, man. I'm sinking in the depths of my sin. I desperately need help. Lord, save me. He will. You know, another thing to say is, Exactly what they said when he got in the boat. You are the son of God. The word of God says if you say with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be what? You better believe it. But you got to believe it and you got to say it. And you got to get out there. And then the last thing that I believe this text teaches us, it says that when he got in the boat, that they all worshipped him. And I don't think they were standing up personally. I think they fell on their face. And they said, surely you are the son of God. There's no other God. And so let me ask you that. Have you ever done that? See, friends, the way we deal with this text is we make the response that God is calling us to make. I admit today, my life's a storm. I need help. Anybody else? I believe today Jesus is who he said he was. He is the Christ. He is the Son of the living God. And you know what belief in the New Testament is? You ready? It's trust. It's trust. It's not just be demons believe and they shudder. It doesn't mean anything. God would say, but are you going to trust me? Are you going to step out? Are you going to put your hand in my hand? 
So I admit I'm a mess, I'm a heap, I need help. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, he's the answer. And now I'm going to make a commitment, I'm going to follow you, God, all the days of my life. And we're going to whip this storm. And we're going to live in the salvation victory that God in Christ has for every single one of us today because storms are going to happen. But God is here. He cares about every single one of you. So would you bow your heads, please? Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the content. Be sure to like and comment. If you want more videos like this, hit the subscribe button right now. And then right next to it is a little bell. Touch the little bell, click the little bell, and that's going to turn on notifications so when we upload another video, you'll know when it comes.